Hello everyone, my name is Kevin Giesland. I'm not a financial or tax expert. I'm a real estate investor, just uh, loving the real estate market and all the ins and outs to it, just trying to pass on some information if and when possible. So today, I wanna to look at being prepared. Um, I'm, I'm probably one of the few individuals that would say it's not always the right time to buy. Having said that, I think it is nice to have everything in order so if and when that opportunity presents itself, you're ready to go. So the first thing I would look at here is numbers. I'm probably gonna have one or two videos upcoming um, kind of going into great detail on this just because I think it's a really important piece that people don't always utilize. Um, but as far as the numbers go, what amount are you okay to get cash flow wise versus being out of pocket? If your down payment's gonna be 40,000 and your closing is gonna be 5,000 and fix up is 5,000, that's 50,000 total, what amount are you willing to get cash flow wise? Now the reason this is important is uh, in being prepared in preparation here is you'll need to know roughly what a home in a specific neighborhood could rent for you'll need to know roughly how much you'll be out of pocket for a home and you'll also need a, a realistic ballpark of what that monthly payment will be because based off these few items with numbers something's either worth looking at so going to look at a property or it's not even worth the time to pull it up or drive across town. So, numbers can save you a lot of headache if you get this straight up front and know what should I be looking at, what should I not be looking at. The second thing is lenders. So the obvious one for lenders is you'll wanna have what's called a pre-qualification letter. That letter basically just tells the seller, yes, you are good to buy, and you're not wasting anyone's time by putting in an offer on their property. So. That's the, the obvious one that you want to have. In addition to that though, you're really going to want to know the terms on the loan because the terms will impact the numbers. What I mean by that is, personally, I've only met one bank, so not a mortgage company, but bank that will do a 30-year note. They're almost all 15 and 20-year notes. Well, on a 15 and 20-year note, your cash flow is going to be a lot less because you're paying off the home quicker. So that's going to impact the numbers. So if you have to do a bank loan for whatever reason, and you have to be on a 15 or 20 year note, then more than likely, you're gonna to need to find a deal that can cash away a whole lot more in order for it to actually make sense. So along with that, different lenders have different products. 30 year, 15 year, 20 year, sometimes 25 year, all that's pretty standard. Whether it's fixed or not fixed, that's gonna be pretty simple to find out. But the, there, there's also possibilities as far as lines of credit goes. So my buddy and I, we bought properties a few years ago. We had a $100,000 line of credit that we had with the lender already established. And honestly, I think we only used it once or twice. And that's okay. The bottom line is we had it ready to go. So when someone randomly called me and said, hey, I got a buddy. They just need to get rid of their house for 53,000. My buddy and I were ready to go. We already had the lender in place. We already ran through the, the numbers. We already ran through what he would or would not require of us in order to get money out on that line of credit. So I could confidently tell that individual the second he told me about that option, hey, we've got it, we have cashed you in two days, period. Because I had already talked to the lender up front. Second thing that some lenders might do is what's called an ARV loan, after repair value. And the cool thing here is some banks will give you money based off the appraised amount, not based off the purchase price. Now the reason that can make a difference is at the moment, rates high, interest rates high, everything just seems kind of high right now. Cash flow is probably not um, what, what you're hoping it would be. However, I've got an individual, I'm personally, I'm not in a position to purchase at the moment, but an individual that I've kind of um, helped along the way get several properties uh, they are always on in the in the place to purchase but they're only going to purchase it if the numbers work now the issue is with cash flow being less he's not going to purchase anything if he has to be out of pocket the full amount what an after repair value loan does is I'm gonna give you an example right now there's a house for sale in my market that I think would be worth about 210 they're trying to sell for 172.5. And personally, I haven't been there, 
but unless there's something crazy I don't know about, I think it's gonna take about 15 to 20,000 in fix up before it's ready to go. So the cash flow piece probably won't be there just because of everything I said earlier. All that to say though, if this, if this lender will, be, will give you a loan based off the 210 amount, not the 172 amount, that's going to allow this individual to be less out of pocket. Because originally, he'd have to have a down payment on the 172, and then he'd have to pay out of pocket the 15,000 for fix up. But what this lender will do is they'll give him either 80 or 85% of the 210. What that's going to allow this individual to do, he can now buy the property, use a little bit of excess money from that loan to help with the repairs. So at the end of the day, he may only be out of pocket five or $10,000. Now this is something where he wasn't planning on buying just because everything just doesn't really look good at the moment as far as numbers go. But he already got this lined up with this, this lender. So he knows if he ever finds a property that may not be a cash flow buy, but it might be an equity buy. If you can be out of pocket five to 10 grand, and still cash flow three or 400 a month, and still have 20, 25% equity, however much it is, that could still be a good option. Um, I know I'm kind of going on and on about this example, but the reason being is this individual had no intention on purchasing right now, but getting in touch with that lender ahead of time, it's an option of something that could be a good deal that he was not expecting. So, bottom line, Get with the lender, see what they have to offer. Rates can probably change, but the products usually don't. So you can at least have a great idea about that. The last piece here is a realtor. So <clears throat> you'll want to definitely have a realtor that's able to start looking around for you. It's not uncommon that some realtors hear about a property before it actually goes on the market. If that's the case, there's a better chance from, from personal experience here, there's a better chance that you're gonna get a good deal on this property if you can put an offer onto the seller and one, it's ease of mind for them. They don't have to worry about all the showings and am I gonna get an offer or am I not? Two, it's quicker. Say, hey, here's an offer. I wanna close in X amount of days. You know, Don't worry about putting on the market. So realtors can be on the lookout for that. Uh, in addition to that, uh, a realtor, is hopefully someone that if they know their numbers decently well, they're not gonna be legally obligated to make sure that they're 100% correct. But if a realtor knows their numbers very well, then they can make sure that they don't waste your time with something that, that probably won't make sense. If you're gonna be losing money each month on a rental and you're out of pocket 30, 40, 50 grand, that's probably a no-go. Um, all that to say, having a realtor ready to go, having them actively looking, they may stumble upon something before it's actually there. So uh, just a few items here, get prepared beforehand. I can honestly say there's two or three properties that I've purchased that I had no intention on buying, but I had all three of these items lined out and something literally just fell uh, upon me. So um, super helpful to have these three and uh, they can make something that you might not think is a deal get turned into a deal in the future. So. Hope this helps. If you have any questions, let me know. Um, and if you would, go ahead and subscribe to the channel here. Thanks so much. I'll take care.